Well, my friends, I'm back. Woo! I have been knitting up a storm. <laughs> it looked like the faster and the harder I knit, the more I had to knit. <laughs> but I thought, okay, it's time to check in. It's time to, to check in and see if we're in the same place and just see how you're doing. All right, this is what I have so far. We're almost to the finish line. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, the glass is half full. <laughs> Shall I go on? <laughs> All right. So, uh, when I left, we uh, you were to knit until you had a good back measurement, which I'll turn the piece in just a minute to turn the sweater. You had uh, decided on how long, what was the length of your back was going to be. And I was going to hit around 18 inches. Doesn't have to be spot on or perfect. You just need an idea. But I asked that you would stop at least two or two inches or maybe a little, little extra before you reach that number. Because we need to, um, to start the one by one ribbing in the back. Now, I finished one sleeve, but I'm going to save that to the end. So, I won't talk about the sleeve right now. That's over here. And, uh, of course, I don't have this one ready yet because I need to do it on camera. All right. So, but so far, this is the front of the sweater. And you can see the lace and everything. Now, we're going to turn so that we can get into our knitting position. Now, my back is just plain, but I'll show it to you in just a minute. Let me make sure. It's, oh, yeah. Okay, I had to figure out which way I was I going. <laughs> because we come such a large piece of fabric. You know, so I understand why a lot of people maybe don't like knitting garments. Oh, it just becomes such a large piece of fabric that you have to work with. Especially if you're doing it all in one piece. Now, I don't know where in the world I am on the camera, so let me see. All right, so I do have that on. Let me see where my needles are. They're up there, and I'm going to pull them down then. All right, so this is what I wanted to show you. Once you have, let's see, so I need to come this way. I need to turn it just a little bit that way. All right, and come in. Okay, so I'll stay out a little bit. All right, so let me just show you this, and then um, most of it will be pretty easy because we're getting ready to end everything. So hold on a minute. Let me just readjust this. Come right here. This is what we're going to be knitting. And then I'm going to show you exactly what I came up with or what I thought would work to end the sweater. All of it. Remember, we're making this from scratch, from just a stitch book. And just thinking of, and, and of course, you're at your own leisure to change anything. Remember I said some that didn't want to continue with the lace. I showed you how to just stop it, but you had to keep the yarn overs all the way to the very end so that this part will keep growing. And it still looks just as pretty. All right, so here I am. So I have reached my, my total number for the back is going to be around 18 inches. I have reached around 16 inches. So at 16 inches, I said everyone needed to be at least whatever your number is. You need to be on row on the right side and row nine. So this is the right side, and here's row nine, and here's row nine on my chart. All right, so I have already start. I had to go ahead and start it, so I wouldn't. So I'm gonna take my little caps off, and then I'm gonna just kind of work here. All right, so I am working across. Get me some yarn first before I even start there we go all right so I am working across the front this front of the sweater see I started here row 9 and I've already worked some across so that I could be you know close to the end all right, let's see, where did I leave off? All right, let's just see, yarn over. Okay, uh, I had to have to just back up and see and count and see where I was. I kind of stopped so that I would be able to, uh, oh yeah, I suppose to start on knit three. All right, so I'm right here where it says knit, um, slip, slip, knit. Okay, which I've already done. I did a yarn over, did a slip, slip, knit on row nine. Now I'm gonna knit, knit three is the next thing it says. Just following the chart, 
just like you've been doing if you're still working the lace. If you're just knitting, you're just knitting across. All right, I knit the three. Now I'm going to knit two stitches together. Then I'm going to yarn over. And remember I said if you just stop, just tell yourself. For some reason it helps you like, oh yeah, stop. Now go back up to the front of the box. And it's a knit one. There it is. Then a yarn over. Then slip, slip, knit. We're just following the chart. There it is. Now there's my three friends. So knit three. One, two, and three. Okay. I'm almost to the end. So we can start on the back. Okay. So after I knit three, then I'm going to knit two stitches together. Then I yarn over, stop. I still have a few stitches left, so I need to go back up to the front of the box, knit one, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, or I'm going to knit two through the back loop. I just need a left leaning stitch. Then I look and see if I have my three friends. There they are. So I knit three, one, two, and three. Okay, knit two stitches together, pull them down a little bit so I can get my needles in there. Now yarn over, I have one stitch left outside of the box, so I knit that one and then I have to yarn over to keep it moving, keep it growing. Slide the marker and stop. Okay, now I'm going to just put a cap on it just for a second. Slide the marker and stop. Now I'm going to readjust and then I'll come right back so that I can show you what we're going to start and start the ribbing on this section. All the uh, stockinette where we've just worked the sides and the back. Alright, hold on. Let me readjust so I can get all this fabric on here. Alright, so now I've got now you got a better view of the back. You can see this is the side and then this goes in the back. I just finished row 9 of the lace. On this side of the sweater, I, you slide the marker. Now we're going to start to just go into the one by one ribbing. And that is simply, since we're on the right side, we knit one and we purl one. We yarn in back, we knit, yarn in front, then we purl. If you get lost, just stop and go back and go knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, and purl. And we're just simply going to work across. Knit, purl, now knit again, and purl. So, we're starting the one by one ribbing to start to end the back section. All of this stockinette, knit on the front, purl on the back. Of course, when I'm going to work across till I get to the other side so we can end the same, make sure that everyone's ending. But the front, we will continue to stay in pattern, either on the chart or just knitting for those that are not doing the lace. Alright, so let me work across. Now you know what we're doing. As soon as we get to the back side, this right here, we just start with a knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. All right, I have a long piece to work on, so it's no sense in doing that on camera, so I'll work off and be back shortly. Okay, so I have worked across my back in the one by one ribbing, and I want to show you how as you get towards the end of the back section, before we go back into the lace, I would stop a few stitches out. And just see if I'm going to come out so that it matches the uh, the up, the beginning, you know, when we started. So, let's see. I go back and I go, let's see, if we get lost, just go back a few stitches. There's a knit purl. There's a knit purl, knit purl. So, now I'm just going to count it off before I go all the way to the end and think, oh, what happened? So, there is knit purl. Then there's a knit purl, knit purl, knit purl knit 
Remember, I started with a knit, so I see that I have a purl stitch. Well, I want to make it. I want to make them equal or or, or mirror, you know, or the same on each end. So all I have to do is just uh, knit these two stitches together when I get to the end. So that way we didn't have to stop and count and try to figure anything out. So let's see, knit, purl. Now I'm up to a knit and then a purl. And then I'm going to put the yarn in back. I'm going to knit and then purl. I just want, it, want them to come out the same. There's a knit. Now purl. And since I started with knit one at the beginning, right after the lace, I'm going to put the yarn in back and I have two stitches left, so I'll just knit those two together. You won't have any problem. And I don't have to sit there and count and do any math or anything. So now, I started with the knit stitch, I ended with the knit stitch. Now I slide the marker, and guess what? We're on this side, and we're ready to work the lace. We're still on row 9, so you simply start again if you're still working the lace. If you're just knitting, you just yarn over and start knitting all the stitches. But for the lace, my uh, lace people, you're going to just yarn over, knit 1, yarn over, Slip, slip, knit. Look for my three friends. There they are right there. Knit three stitches. That's one, two, and three. Then I knit two stitches together, just like this. Yarn over, stop. And then you go back up to the front of the box, the repeat box, and continue to work across. Alright, now once you get here to this end, you do just the same as you normally would. You turn the work, alright, and you knit the uh, five stitch border. And once you turn, of course you're on the wrong side, you'd purl all the stitches back until you get to the back section. And you will start in again with the one by one, by one rib, ribbing stitch just reading your own work. So on the front, if we knit we knit a stitch, on the back it's going to be it'll be a purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, and so on. Alright, so now we have some work to do. We're going to continue to do this until we get to row 16 of the lace pattern. The lace is, is in charge here. So we will continue to work the lace, work the ribbing, Work the lace on the opposite side all the way to row 16. Stop when you get to row 16 and we will get ready to start, you know, binding off. I'm going to show you my idea of maybe how we're going to bind off these stitches, what we need to do. Does that make sense? All right. Well, in fact, go ahead and, and uh, uh, do I want to do 16? Hmm. We'll just get to 16. We'll just get to row 16, which is a wrong side row. Go ahead and purl the stitches. Okay. And then, uh, because I think we need some, um, I'm just trying to think. Should I go ahead and bind off on that row? Hmm. All right. Let's work up to row 16 and stop. How about that? It's better to not, uh, better to stop than to have to undo anything. All right, I'm going to work off camera, and I'll see you back shortly. Well, I got everything done that I needed to do off camera so that I could come back to show you so that you can see if this is what you have. When I left, uh, we were to work, continue to work the uh, lace pattern one more time and um, work all the way up to row 16. But for the back, we were doing the one by one ribbing, and I went all through that. So now, look, we have a nice back or a nice edge for the back of our sweater. And then when the lace comes into play, we're just going to just put a very small, little narrow, just a couple of rows because I don't want the lace to be heavy because I want it to be very thin and have that uh, like a shawl effect in the front. A little bit how it will drape so but look at yours this is what I have I have this nice pretty one by one ribbing that looks good I've got a good nice length in the back not too long for me because I'm short 
like I said, but when I left, I was trying to make a decision. I'm so glad I didn't make it before <laughs> that I just went on to bed. Sometimes it pays to just go to bed. <laughs> so I was trying to figure out a scene in my mind, and I was so tired. But everyone worked up to row, at least to row 16 of the chart. Row 16 of the chart, of course, is the wrong side, and you were to pearl back. So I was trying to decide whether to do something a little different. But no, what I, I finally decided to do was to just pearl back on row 16 of the lace. You know, just pearl back for everyone who's, you know, so that we can end the lace, totally end the lace, and then I don't have to worry about it. So that's what I've done. Let me just make sure I've got this on. Yeah, I do. I'm sorry about the glare. It's in the little folder. Okay. So it was just a pearl back row. And now I am, if you, once you do that, that will put us on the front edge again. So now I'm going to turn my sweater around so it'll be in the position as if like we're going to knit it. Then I can talk. Let's see how that looks on camera. Let me move it over. See how it looks. Okay, that's good. Alright, so now, as you can see, once you purl row 16 back we are on the front now I feel comfortable the lace and everything is is um, closed off we purl all those stitches now on this right side row everyone everywhere we will simply knit all the stitches so we're gonna knit across the lace now we're getting ready to stop and getting ready trying to set up a nice clean bind off edge I don't want to bind off with a lot of different crazy stitches so but you are now on the right side just knit all the way across you walk you through this part a little bit and then of course when you get here to the ribbing you do have to go back into the ribbing so you'd finish knitting there's no yarn overs there's a there's nothing you just knitting all those stitches to close them off have a nice clean edge but then you would just read your stitches on the one by one ribbon and I can see it's on the front side it'll start with a knit one purl knit purl knit purl all the way across till you get to the other lace on the opposite side go back into knitting all those stitches and then when we turn the work after we knit those stitches the last uh, lace on the other edge other side of the sweater when we turn, of course, we will be on the wrong side, on the purl side. This is where we're going to actually bind off. So I will fin uh, knit my row across, and then I'm going to come back, and we will start the binding off process. So I will see you back shortly. Well, I am ready to bind off. We have knit across and sealed off all the stitches. We I'll continue to work the one by one ribbing. Now I'm on the wrong side, as you can see. This is the pearl, the wrong side. Now we're simply going to bind off. And I tried to bind off, if you've worked with me before, you know, uh, as much as possible on the wrong side. It doesn't always, there, there's always exception to the rule, and sometimes you, it just it doesn't work out. But this should work just fine. Until we get to, you know, uh, even with the ribbing. I will stay in the ribbing pattern, but I am still on the wrong side. I don't have to switch to the right side. Now, I could have taken out my markers. I don't know why I didn't. So, if you took out your markers as you were working along. I'm just so used to them being there. I just left them, I guess. I don't know. I guess I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I was just so happy to, to see you know that we're close to the end. All right, so here we go. All I'm going to do is now, I take a smaller needle. I mean, you know, like a short double pointed needle. Uh, if you don't have a number nine uh, double point, then try to go big, you know, maybe you got a 10 or something. I wouldn't go down a size, I'd go up a size, just to keep it nice and loose. And of course, you got to start off and then make sure I've got good lighting and everything right there should be just fine. All right, and of course you have to start with two stitches. And of course, I don't have to do all this, but we're just going. So I knit one, uh, one stitch, and then I knit the second stitch. And since I don't have the weight of that sweater over here, 
you know, with that other needle coming around, I just have, all I have is this little bitty lightweight needle. See, it, it, uh, it doesn't pull. So now I reach back and lightly just bind off. You don't have to tug at it or, or pull under anything. Next stitch, re reach back and bind off. I didn't want much on this uh, little front edge because I want it, hopefully it's going to kind of drape like the front of one of the shawls that we made. I won't look right now because we hadn't had enough time. Now I'll just take off my markers as I go. Like I said, I could have taken them off. So you will continue to knit, not purl, even though we're on the purl side. And then just reach back and bind off. Knit the next stitch. Reach back and bind off. Reach back and bind off. Just like that. Oh, it's so much easier when you have, don't have the when you're not working with the other end of this needle and working with the fabric too. It just wears my arm out, my shoulder. And bind off. Now I'll stop and just and do a few more stitches and I'll stop and then just talk you through the rest because we have to get to our sleeve. We have to get to our, I've got one sleeve done. I made it a very simple sleeve. I did not do any thing, um, you know, I didn't add anything I, or try to make it. No, I just did it real simple because this turned out to be a much longer project than I anticipated it to be. <laughs> but I, I enjoyed it. And uh, when I have, um, I won't wear it, of course, I don't, you know, because it's not done. But when we do have our sit and chat and everything, I will wear the sweater and we'll talk about it. And uh, I'll give you my view on it. You can let me know what you thought about it or what changes, you know, look good or. All right, so now I'm going to stop. I'm going to just pull this up. I'm going to turn to the front so I can look at it. Make sure that my bind off edge is not tight. And there is our bind off. Now, of course, when we sting this, it's going to lay and drape but there is the bind off edge as we bind off on the wrong side now look I'm gonna bring it real close you see that 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 straight line there it's always kind of tight and pull, seems to pull your fabric but I have it on the wrong side because like I said when I can I try to bind off on the wrong side on this side all I get are those little bitty pearls right there on the edge and we could have done more rows but my back was the one by one was growing even larger and I needed to stop it so one little row is I think will be just fine and hopefully see once we steam it and it's nice and drapey hopefully we will get that front edge twirl but there you have it now you are to continue and I'm going to continue all the way across till I'll um Should I come back and, and just kind of, or, or do you know how to bind off in pattern? You get to this, you'd come over here to the one by one ribbing. You'd, whatever the stitch is, there's a purl stitch. You, um, let me come, let me come back. I'll go ahead and finish this and let me come back. I can show you better than I can tell you. All right, so I'm binding off this edge. I'll come back and do a little of this. Then we'll be ready to, uh, uh, then we can talk about our sleeve. All right, back shortly. So I'm back real quick. I've already bound off the first part of the sweater, the lace section. And so now I'm up to the ribbing. And I thought I'd come back and just do a few stitches just for those who haven't. done it recently or maybe just need a little more help all right let me just get everything straight see if I'm on if you can if I'm close enough okay yep and I can bring it up 
just going to do a little bit because we have got to get to our sleeve. All right, so, so I'm over here. I have a couple of stitches left out of the, the lace. And I'm just working right up. I knit the next stitch, reach back, and bind off. Last stitch of the lace, reach back, and bind off. Of course, I can get rid of my markers. Now I'm up to my one by one ribbing in the back. You see that? All right, the first stitch right there is a purl. So that means I need to bring my yarn to the front just like I'm going to purl. Then purl that stitch. We're binding off. Stop. It's a little awkward when you purl because you have to kind of, the yarn is in front now. And then you reach back and you bind it. Bring that stitch over and bind this stitch off. The next stitch is a knit stitch. So it takes a little more time. It's going to slow you down. So now I have to put the yarn in back because that's where the knit stitch belongs. Then I knit the stitch, reach back and bind off. Okay, now here comes that purl again. It's a little awkward doing the purl. You bring the yarn in front. I purl the stitch because we're binding off in the pattern of the one by one ribbing. And then bind off. Okay, the next stitch is a knit, of course, so the yarn has to go to the back to stay to the true way the stitch is made. Then bind off. All right, now back to the front. After you get comfortable in doing it, you, you will get a little rhythm. Like I say, it's a little awkward. But if you take your time, it's one of those necessary things that you have to learn about knitting. <laughs> Just some things are necessary. <laughs> oh. Now if you don't bind off, you'll get that that strange line. And um, it just won't, I, I, you'll know immediately. It just will not look right. It will look like you, like you did something wrong, like something went wrong. So, it's not my favorite to have to bind off all these, these uh, rib stitches in pattern, but like I say, it's necessary. Now, I'll stop right here because I want to, we've got to get to our sleeve. Okay, now keep it loose. This helps to keep it loose um, because I'm not working with this other end and, and trying to carry the whole sweater. And don't forget to put a cap on your other end of this needle since, and then see I'm not having to carry the whole weight of the sweater and the needle because I'm just working with this one, which is easy and light and small, and this part. So that's simply how you bind off in pattern the one by one ribbing for our sweater. Now once all this is steamed, then we'll be able to kind of get things to kind of lay right in, in the right position. So don't worry about that right now. That's just part of it. All right, there's the back. Now when you turn to the front, now this part is rolling because we didn't add other, we didn't add a couple extra rows, but once we steam it out, it will be just fine. But there is the front, which is what we want to have. That will be, you know, the public side that people will see. All right, continue. I will continue to bind off in the ribbon, and then we will finally get to the sleeve. <laughs> I promise. All right, take care. All right, I am back, and I'm ready. I hope you are. We have had a workout in knitting on this project. <laughs> but I'm ready, set to go on doing the sleeve. All right, now I have one sleeve done, so I'm going to go ahead and just talk about this for a moment. And then I will show you how I pick up and knit my simple sleeve. This this sleeve is, after all this work, I didn't have any, I didn't want to do any increases or decreases or anything on a sleeve. I just wanted a very simple sleeve. Uh, this sleeve comes down right below your elbow. So when we start knitting in the round, we will knit 
this section here, this part all the way down till you can bend to the bottom of your elbow so that you can bend your elbow. This cuff that I put on is not like to a tight fitting cuff like that. It's meant to be an open sleeve sweater. See how open it is? It's just a little decoration just to end and make the end look nice. And we'll just do the same one by one ribbing for however many uh, rounds you want. Eight, six to eight, whatever. You can go higher. But uh, it stops right below the elbow. Uh, and like I said, there's no... Uh, decreasing or anything any kind of um, numbers you have to worry about now I started my aim on my schematic was 56 but my aim was to get to 56 and then by the time we added the stitches underneath the arm space and then picked up I came out with 64 I started to back it down then I decided no I think I need that little extra room so my this sleeve is 64 stitches and I just started knitting in the round once I picked up. I counted several times. And then, I, like I said, I decided to stay with 64. Now I just have to match this sleeve with the same number of stitches. So it doesn't matter if you match mine. It, my number is just if you match, get your two sleeves to match each other, be the same uh, stitch count. So uh, the number on the schematic is a is the number that you increase up to and then that number can grow four or you know a little more stitch uh, uh, you can it will the stitch count will grow a little more uh, as you need it to fill in that those gaps or any holes or anything else so like for me it's 64 hope I didn't botch that too much <laughs> you can tell my voice is going <laughs> All right, so that's the sleeve that I have done. I just wanted you to see it. So now I'm going to reposition, and then we will pick up the opposite sleeve. Now you will need you will need the same number, same uh, needle size needle that you did the whole sweater with. This sleeve, since we knitted this sweater was knitted in the round top down, so therefore the sleeve is already set on a on uh, number nine needle so you, if you change a number eight you can change and go to a number eight for any type of cuff or something like that where you might want to do a border or a cuff that's fine if you have a number eight I think I dropped down to a number eight on this just to make sure it didn't gap too you know that the gap you know the opening wasn't too wide but if you don't have a number eight sixteen inch uh, needle then you'll just stay on your number nine but you cannot change the needle up here in this part of the sweater it has to stay on the nine uh, and the whole way down um, otherwise you'll see you'll see a, a, like a gauge line you'll see the difference that you change a needle somewhere along the way all right so here's my needle that I'm going to be knitting with I'm on um, slide the sweater over and reposition the camera and we will get started back in just a minute all right, as you can as you can see, I already have when I transferred my stitches, I transferred them onto uh, a number nine needle, and now I'm going to take the n number nine needle that I had that I used on that side. Now I have it free, so that I can go ahead and knit, pick up stitches, and knit from one ne one uh, needle to the other needle to do this arm space. The first thing I need to do now, alright, kind of spread your stitches out. I'm not even going to worry about counting them because I have to match. It doesn't matter what it is. I have to match my other sleeve because I already have one sleeve done. My number is 64. So I'm going to come here. I used to try to go to the center, but it's a lot. Let's see, can I turn it just a little bit more towards my facing me so that I can see it better yeah I can I can work this a little better all right I'm going to start right over instead of starting right in the center I start a little bit over to one side um, use this the back side but this is the opposite sleeve so I'm just going to go up under two strands I'm taking this needle and I'm going up under two strands somewhere I'm just going to pick up, not right here in the corner, but right, say right there. 
Now here's those stitches I added at the bottom. So I'm not, I used to go in the center and then I stopped doing that. I like to go either from one little corner or the other, whichever sleeve I'm on. And it seems to work better for me. So I just pop my needle in there. I grab my, we'll just put this one down out of the way somewhere, put a little cap on it out of the way. See, can I stick it somewhere? Okay. All right, so then I take uh, my yarn, make a nice, leave a nice tail because, you know, it doesn't matter. Knit happens. You could have a hole after we do all we can to close them. Sometimes you do have a hole or whatever. So I leave a nice long tail. Can you see that long tail there? All right, so I just, just make, just loop the yarn like this and just loop it over the, over the needle. And I hold and I pull the loop through. Now I'm, I'm just going to concentrate instead of worry about counting. I'm just going to concentrate to go up under two strands of yarn. Because I put real stitches and not just a loop. So you should see the real, just like, just like any time we knit, you should see that there's two strands on top like that. So I just concentrate on that. So I'm going to work my way around. And I hold the tail for a couple of stitches. And then you can let go of the tail. See, alright. But when we come around, we have to remember those double strands is one stitch. Now I'm going to stick that tail way down here out of the way so I won't start knitting with it by mistake. So untangle it and stick it down into the sleeve. Just like that. Just stick it out of the way. Now I'm going to continue to look for, look at the top. I, I turn it and look. Can you see how I'm under two strands? There's a strand. There's one because I have real stitches. And then I just start picking up. I'm not worrying about, don't worry about counting yet. We, you're going to have a lot of time to count and try to get this sleeve. Uh, you know, I, I got to get this sleeve to match my opposite sleeve and you're gonna notice like man I only added so many stitches but look like there are more well I stretch mine open a little bit I just go ahead and pull it open and that way it gives me a few more stitches that's why I that's why the stitch count when I um, when we start is low 56 I don't start with 60 or 64 or 68 whatever your number is I start much lower at least eight stitches low so that I will have be able to um, You know just pick up what I need All right, I'm looking for two strands and then I'm gonna move now we come to One of the little corners now sometimes it doesn't need it Especially, um, now this one is not near as hard to uh, close up as when we have the eyelets. You know, we have we have to really make sure that we don't get a big hole. But I'm going to go ahead and add one right here. I, when I pull it open so that you can see if there's going to make a gap or if it's going to make a hole. If it is, go ahead and let's just fill it now. If you get too many stitches out, we'll, take, we'll knit two together somewhere. So I did that. Now there's, I'm, I'm pulling it open, I'm just checking to see how it looks, if it looks like there's going to be some type of gap or hole. And right there, it could be, I could close that up, but I still may get a hole, so I'm going to go on the two strands right there. If it's too many, I can get rid of it. Now I'm going to look and see if I made myself a hole. Let me go up here to the first stitch on this needle and just knit for then I'm going to hold. Okay, see if there's a hole. If I made a hole that, that looked like I made a hole right there. It was too big. Let me take that one out. Let me back out. It's just in this part of the sweater, of the arm. So I'm going to go down here and pick up another stitch. Let's see. How about if I pick up a stitch from over here? How about if I jump over that gap? And then let's see, can I knit? Then I just simply start knitting from this needle that I had holding the stitches. I'm going to knit a few and then I'm going to look and see how it looks. Okay, that looks nice and neat. Let me pull myself some yarn. 
as I start to knit around. Now let's just take a minute. You see how I started? And I didn't start in the center. I kind of started over near this corner. And I worked across trying to just nicely space out going up under two strands to make a good solid join. Now it's so much easier than have to deal with the waist yarn. But you do whatever you do, or whatever you've learned, or whatever works for you. If you're used to it, that's what you're used to. I just put it on the, this needle, and I can just start knitting. See, now, now it's going to get all... I'll have to stop and straighten it out after a while, because I have this whole sweater here. So now I'm going to knit around. Let's see how fast I can knit around. Just see if I'm in camera. Yep. Okay. Keep going, Jay. Keep going. Yeah. Now I can pull it out. So I can go back and look. And if I, when I come around again, if I see a gap or something, I might be, I can feel it. There's a little gap right there. I'm not sure where that is, but I can check it when I come around. Once we get around, now I'm going to spin the whole sweater around. Remember, everything is so deceiving when you're on the, when you have things on a needle, trying to see exactly what do I have. <laughs> Am I going in the right? <laughs> see, but look how much easier I can just knit from one needle that was holding the stitches onto the one that I'm going to work. And it's the same size, a 9 16 inch. I'm not going to count yet. There's plenty of time to count. What I want to do is get this first round on and see how bad if I lift any uh, bad little holes or something's going to jump out at me. See, I'm just knitting because it's already on the needle. Whether you came back the next day like me or the next month, it's already on there. And with coupons, these little the needles I use aren't that expensive, the bamboo ones. Yes, they have a lot of drag. And some, you know, compared to metal needles, but if you're older... You don't have to fight the metal needles. All right, I'm coming up to the other side of the sleeve, the other little gap. Can you see that? Um, okay, now I got the stitches. Now I picked up the last stitch. Now this needle is free. I can move this needle and it can sit over there waiting for something else. Now I can look and see. Let me open it out. Make sure I'm on camera. Make sure the light's hitting. Now I can see if, you know, pull it open so that you can see where you can go in case there is. Okay, not there because there's only one strand, so I don't want that. But now I can skip kind of over here, and there is two strands, and then I just wrap the yarn around the needle and pull a loop through. Then I can open it up. Here's that tail right there. So we will need a marker. I'll find me a little, um, as we get to where we start. Now I'm going to look real close. Here's a funny place here. I'm not really sure if that's a, what that is, but I'm going to spread it open and then I'm going to look, move that tail out of the way. I'm going to go up under. I have no idea how come that 
that gap is so large. But I'm going to try to go up under. Let's see. Well, we left a tail just in case. So now I feel like I'm up to where the first stitch. And don't forget, there are some stitches that are double that we'll have to count as one. But I think I'm up far enough right now that I can go ahead. We're going to put a mark so that I know where the beginning of the round. Okay. Now, just so that things won't slip off, or you can go ahead and just cap. And we can go back and count this way without knitting another stitch. We can just put on our caps. All right. And then let me stop and let me go around and count and see if there's some gaps here that I can fill in. My number is 64 because I've already done the opposite sleeve, so they have to match. All right. I'll count off uh, camera and I'll come back and let you know what I have. And if I need to pick up uh, more or get rid of some back in just a minute all right so I've counted off camera while I was checking for holes in anything that I need and I'm over about three stitches or so so I'm going to just start knit another round I don't pull that out see we're just but we need to put a marker where our where our round starts so I'm putting a marker there to show this is where my round starts. Now I'm going I'm going to start again going around now if I see anything that's two two stitches that are too close or anything that I can change not necessarily in here but as you go around in the curves. Alright but I know those I'm going to go ahead and take out two of these though because I and I'm just going to start knitting around and I'm going to check as I knit Ooh, I think my foot is going to sleep <laughs> I'm sitting on a stool oh lord I think my foot let's see can I stand up maybe I won't fall over okay now I'm just going to spread my stitches out especially in this space under arm here and I'm just going to look as I work my way around. I have a marker now so I know where the beginning of the round. And if I see something where, okay, like, you know, that's a good, that seems like a good, I don't know, those two stitches look like they could go together and close up a gap. So you can kind of judge like, okay, there's a gap. Can I put two stitches together? And that would close up a gap. Here's one right here. Let's try that. Then spread. Okay, so far this is what I have. I'm going to get some more yarn. I'll go too far. Now I'm standing up, so I hope I'm in the camera. And then once you get into the, the top part of the sweater, of course all those stitches should be just fine. They, they just spread out nice. We had those on the... So I'm going to just knit around real quick to see... So these first two, maybe even three first three rounds, you're going to just be adjusting the stitches and counting, trying to get your two sleeves to match. If it's a perfect world, <laughs> and uh, we did the same increases, you think the sleeve would just be perfect. But for some reason, it doesn't always happen. Sometimes it, sometimes it does, though. But if it doesn't, you just... Keep right on, like I say, you just knit around and knit two together where, uh, you know, if there's a place that can you can close a gap. So I'm going to knit around. And 
and C and then we'll do the counting off camera but I just want you to see the top part of the this section should be fine all the stitches is where And sometimes if there's if you've crowded too many stitches in and look how I kind of crowded those two stitches together so I'm just going to knit two together right there take it out so now it becomes one stitch now see the other spread out really nice see a lot of times you can just look at as you work around you just spread them out a little bit just to see how they fall on the needle and like I said sometimes you just put run them together Get some yarn here. So I'm just going to spread them out a little bit and see if I ran, picked up too many stitches that I ran them together. And if I did, I'll just knit two stitches together. And see down here, that looks, that looks like a good one. Let's see, how about these two? Are they too close? Did I run them together? Let's see. That looks good. All right, now I'm down here in this little gap section. And then I'm going to get ready and see if I need to close up anything. Nope, I'll go ahead. All right, now I'm up to my marker that starts around. So what I want to do is pop on my caps. Then I will count again off camera just to see if I've kind of taken a few of those stitches out. I think I had maybe like three or so that I, to get to my number. My number is 64 to match my opposite sleeve. Yours is going to be whatever. All right, I'll come off, I'll go count and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so I finally made it to my number 64 so don't uh, get worried or, or be surprised that like oh yeah I must you know I, did I pick up too many or just go around the first time you count you see if you have if you have three too many then like I said knit two together mainly between the gaps and in here you don't have to worry too much about it up here. You know, I wouldn't do it up here. You know, you just take your time, and uh, like I say, it may take you one round. It took me two rounds to get it to, uh, to get it to match my other number. Now, the sleeve will grow, just like I said. For instance, I got my schematic out real quick. All right, say um, the medium to large size, your designated number. To increase up to was 52 for the sleeve. We started with 8, but you kept increasing till you got at least 52 stitches. Okay, from that 52, you can go up 4 more stitches. Um, you know, as you start, you know, as you start filling in gaps and holes. So 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. And then you are allowed another 4 stitches. So you can go up to 60, but now over over 60 then you you're getting way you you're making the sweater gonna the sleeve is gonna be too large so you can go up four at least four and if you have to go a little bit over four that's fine but the person the 2x or 3x we increase your 28 times and your number was to get to 60 you know as the base number now you can go up as high as 64 or if you need extra uh, you can go up to 68 you know like if you tried it on or something you go oh mine I, I don't know mine might be a little tight it's okay but I wouldn't go up any higher because my numbers by sheer math you do have an option that you have four stitches go up or down however to make to try to help get the fit so for me, 56, I got to 60, but I needed to fill in more gaps or I just had more stitches, so I settled on 64 
to make it a lot easier to match up my numbers, not strange numbers. They're going to be nice, even numbers. So 64 worked good. I was able, when I finished that sleeve, I tried, you know, I put my arm in it. It just looked really nice. So, like I said, so I've already got that done now. Now I know that I have my marking in. Make sure you put a marker for the beginning of the round. Now all I have to do is sit back watch a movie or something and you're just going to be knitting in the round I knit let me get the other let me show you the other sleeve again see now you're just knitting and hopefully like I said be sure to leave a long tail on the end that you can tuck down on the inside because there will be places that you might like oh Jay I did have a gap okay that's what this yarn is for so you can leave it even longer than that and stick it down in here so that you're not don't knit with it by mistake and then when you're all done you can take that and your yarn needle and just kind of close up any big holes or gaps that you were not able to do when you picked up stitches sometimes it just depends on the stitch okay let me just cap this because I don't want to lose those. Now let me just real quick go back to the other sleeve. And then I'm going to call it a wrap. <laughs> okay. Let's see where we are on the camera. Here is the sleeve. I haven't seen the sleeve. Okay. When I steam my sleeves, I also like to, I like to steam them like they, when you send your clothes to the cleaners, you know how they steam the sleeve this direction, like that, and you can see just a little hint. So, this I would lay something, maybe, if I didn't turn it on the wrong side, then I'd lay a little napkin or a little pillowcase and lightly steam on top of the pillowcase and then smooth it out. I hand press everything out. But from under the arm space or to down below your elbow, you need to go below the elbow. I took, I think it was seven inches. So all of this garter came to about seven inches. And then I, if you want to switch to an eight, number eight, 16 inch, you can. I would switch it before I start one row, before I start the ribbing. I know that if I got to right to uh, almost to row seven, then I'd go ahead and when I started the round again, knit, just knitting, I would change the needle to a number eight. And then the next time I come back to the, uh, to the beginning of the round, then I'd start uh, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. Does that make sense? It's a lot of information, it's a lot to take in. But if you've done some of the other top-down sweaters, this one is just so different because of uh, I was trying out the charts from the book that we're working out of. And I thought, wonder if I could make this work as the front of a sweater. So now, steam now just a little bit, just a little, just to kind of see. I only steam since this is acrylic yarn, or if I do any yarn and steam. I always steam on the wrong side. So this is the side that I would lay on my ironing board and really steam and you can pin it or however you want to and then I hand press. I steam a little bit section and then I hand press it open to open it out. But you can see it starts to starts to have that nice little drape. Now if it's if it's gonna be what I hope it will be, I don't know. <laughs> oh. but I think I would like to do it again but I think I would change the yarn I think this yarn was just it just I don't think it it holds the weight of all this lace I think it would do a lot better and maybe um, a, a number four but maybe a little heavier number four so that it could hold all of this pretty lace but who knows we'll see all right so I hope uh, like I said this was a long project I'm gonna try to think of something really short <laughs> short and simple 
Oh, we all need a break, don't we? But thank you for at least going along with me. Like I said, I had no idea how it was going to come out. But I was trying to show you how to work, how to process of, of all the steps and how to bring them together. And, you know, hopefully we have a nice design. If not, hopefully we have learned from it. You didn't use your best yarn. You just We're just practicing. You get an idea, you see something, and, you know, it's worth it if, if you, um, that kind of person that likes to, you know, like to think out your own brain and think out your own mind and, and you just want to give it a try, this is the process. <laughs> it's work. It's not magic. It's a process. So, I will see you in a sit down where we can sit and chat. I'll wear the sweater. I'll tell you we'll have pros and cons. We'll see how we can change it or use it in a different way. But we keep it moving forward. So this is Jay. And I thank you to all my friends. Everyone, everywhere, every size. Thank you for just taking this journey with me. We're not in a race. We're not trying to um, you know, do something. We just, we just want, I just want to work together and learn together and grow together. So, happy knitting, and until next time, I will see you later. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.